know, I've done that many paintings in the landscape format. I thought, I thought I'd try one the other way around for a change in this the portrait style with the paper going the other way. So this is a, a simple scene, a, a photograph I took last week in Kingsby Water Park. There's a little shoreline there, and what I'm going to try and do is try and create some light coming down down the middle with the the branches sort of silhouetted. It should look quite nice when it's done. So I've got my usual palette here. Ultramarine, lemon yellow, Payne's grey, Lizarin crimson, raw sienna, burnt umber and light red. Underneath that I've got the, the paints that I use, Cotman watercolours, got a tea towel, water jar over there, got three brushes, three quarter inch flat, number three rigger and the large Ron Ranson hike. And I've got the, uh, the paper in portrait mode this time, 15 inches up, 11 inches wide and it's clipped to a piece of 9mm plywood that's heavy enough so it's not going to move around. I'm going to start off with clear water on the paper, nice and even. That way I won't get any of that dreaded cockling, even though it's only lightish paper. It's only £130 in weight, so it's not the heaviest, but it should be able to, you can still get away with it. So that's nice and wet now. So, the first colour I'm going to go into is raw sienna. And just work that all the way down, no particular order to it, just bash it in. I'm going to clean the brush and go into Ultramarine, Ultramarine, a bit of uh, Payne's Grey, a bit of Payne's Grey, something like so. And I'm going to, I want to light uh, somewhere, somewhere down the middle ish, so I'm just going to brush that in, brush that in, a bit more blue. Coming in from either side. So we get a nice sort of light, light area coming down the uh, coming down the page. Something like so. Now, same colours, we've got raw sienna, a bit of Payne's grey, ultramarine, and I'm going to put in those, work out, first work out where your horizon line is, I'm going to go somewhere around there, and I'm going to put in those distant trees over there on the horizon, and then while I've got the colour on the brush still, just pull down the reflections. Sienna. I mean, obviously, that's why you have to you have to get this in while the paper's still damp. Obviously, the advantage of that is you could let it dry, re-wet it, and then pull the reflection down again. But then you're going to mess about getting the same colours on the palette. I find it a lot easier doing it this way around because then I can just pull down the reflections with that colour already on the brush. I haven't got to worry about doing it afterwards. So. Again, just continuing this. I'm going to worry too much about this side because it's going to be covered up by the uh, the tree. That's just very simple. <coughs> very simple trees on the horizon there. Now then, there's a bit of just a bit of land on the left before we get to our tree. So I'm going to. Just pop that in. Something 
I'm just putting the brush, it's getting a bit dark now. I'm going to get back to that light raw sienna colour. And now we're sort of around the base of where the tree is going to be. There's also a bit of green down there, so I might just pop into the yellow while I'm there. Just so just some of that green. Just a touch of Payne's Grey. I'm just touching the Payne's Grey as I go up like that. Just to get a bit of variation. And then I might just switch over to here. Raw Sienna. The um, Ultramarine. And sort of this is where the, the bank's sort of coming out into the water. Just pull down some reflections while I'm there. Oh dude, I don't want to go crazy. So now I'm going to put this tree in, so I'm going to start off. I'm going to probably clean the brush, I've just wet the end again, just to make it a bit... The wetter the brush is, the, the easier the paint comes off it, so... Nice and wet, so all the airs are stuck together, and then all burnt umber, ultramarine, so you get a nice dark colour. And then the tree is going to start about here. In fact, what I'll do first, you can see how the paper stretched. So I'm just going to pull it down a bit more and just refix it. You just about get away without a fix in there. If you want, you can use like a piece of blue tack, or I have got like a little pin, which I, I could use, but you can get away with that corner. But if you do find it flicking up or something, or you're catching it as you're brushing in, just like I say, blue tack, or or you could just cut your board, just cut your board to suit exactly. So a wetter, a wetter brush, alt burnt umber, ultramarine, and then starting about here, and I'm going to go up. Right the way up, up off, off the top of the page, and then there's a few of these. So I'm just gonna pop a few of these in. A few more going that way. You can do this with the rigger if you want. I'll just find it a lot easier, especially with the thick branches to use the. Uh, Use the hike. So the thick ones with the hike, and then once I've got a few of these in. Switch to the um, switch to the rig and put the finer ones in. So now I've got the uh, I've got the main trunks going up. I'm just work, doing a few limbs coming off it. So that's the main stuff in. Now I'm going to switch to the uh, the rigger brush, which is our one our fine one we use for grasses and figures and twigs and all that sort of stuff so now you can see now you get a nice finer line with this Always need plenty of water with a rigger brush because it doesn't hold much paint. So you can see the contrast in strokes. So the two, the two in tandem work very well together. I always, I always find. But again, I don't want to block it all in. I want to leave plenty of that colour in the background, you know, and all these background trees. I want to be able to see them. So when you got enough, that'll do. That's just this, just that's 
I'm happy with that I think. So the next thing I'm going to do is go back over that grassy area just to sort of hide the bottom of these trunks so it doesn't look as if they're floating in the air. You can see that sort of blending in, blending in better now. fence posts so again I'm just going to go back into the dark mix I'm going to put you're not going to see this very well what I'll do I'll just highlight it so that it stands out more I've got a post there I'm going to stick another post there and just a little bit going between the two what I'm going to do is just if you imagine you've got the light coming down there and then it's just sort of just, just catching it on the edge and then while we are uh, no it's a bit too dark I just want that a little bit lighter so we've got our post and maybe just the top of that. You see it just looks as if there's a just a touch of light just catching the top of that little bit that little bit of the fence. So that's I think that'll do for that. Now I want to I just want to put the short area in there so move back to the dark darker mix. Mm. It's all got a bit muddy. I'm going to clean the brush first. Now the sure I'll go a bit of burnt raw sienna, such a burnt ombre, ultramarine, just dabbing in all three of them and then a quick sweep. stones and pebbles just just a piece of plastic card just tiny little just scraping off the little pebbles because I've not used much water in this mix it's nice and thick I'm gonna straight I've got to wait for the paint to dry it all I can just go straight in with it and also you know, just just flick it up just create a few bits of grass here and there To the rigger. I'm just going to stick a couple of little birds. Where should we stick the birds? I think maybe. And then in this corner, just pop your signature. And that's just a simple little scene in Kingsby Water Park. I like the um, it, it, I think it works much better in this portrait format as if uh, and unless I'd have to, you know, rather than the other way around because the main elements are vertical here, so I, I prefer this, this uh, format. So, just have a look at our finished painting. You see, I've tried to get that light. With the reflection in the water, just to make the uh, the sort of sky and water more interesting with that light effect. If we just have a quick look at the uh, photograph, I've kept the composition. I haven't done much with the composition at all. I was quite happy with the way it worked, really. It's down the bottom. We've got our little beach. Those distant, uh, you can't see the reflections from those distant trees, but I've, I've put them in. It always looks better with them in, I think. And then the big vertical elements with the tree, sort of silhouetted against the bright sky. 
and I've tried to make a feature of that bright sky bringing that uh, sort of lighter area down into the water as well you can see the effects of our little scrapings with the car just acts of the, makes the uh, foreground shore more interesting with those little pebbles and you can see how just a, a, just a little scrape with the card helps bring the fence post to life really along with those um, little bits of grass here and there well I hope you like that, thanks for watching keep practicing and I'll see you again soon